sing his hymns. This first poem is called Treasure. I walk the boulevard of worldly vanity, surrounded by wares of lust and profanity. On every side are soulless faces, blank eyes, shut ears. They wander aimlessly without direction, yet slowly, inexorably, the same destination. Why do I mingle? Why do I linger among the corpulence amidst the vice? In this place, what do I hope to achieve? I'm given jewels, nuggets of knowledge, of great value, I'm told, offers of wisdom, offers of love, offers of glory, offers of fame. Yet, how valuable are such treasures when all they buy are short-lived pleasures? What use are such wares when imbeciles are counted as wise, where prostitutes are lovers, when the lost claim to have knowledge and glory lasts only a day? Their treasures make them look the same. Do I affect them by seeming similar? Or does similarity cause no difference? The second poem is called Circles in the Sand. Let the hammer fall on the wind-blown steps where the self-made angels beat their wings. In time with the beat of the drum, drum, drumming noise of the frenzied dance, never stopping, drunken prancing. Circles in the grass in the sand where their self-made idols making noise, standing poised on the upraised fingers of their red flushed hands. Sitting tall they stand, standing small in the sand. Tearless eyes, peerless sighs, blinded by each other's faces. They look without seeing, they hear without listening, they speak without saying. This poem is called Conviction. Two tall columns, one of earth and one of sky, support the bridge where he stands suspended, embattled, hunched back, eyes blinded by blood. The noise of terrestrial struggle deafens ethereal hope. Standing on earth and looking to heaven, belonging to heaven, but bound to the earth. A tug of war for one man, and the face of the soul is changed. Is he an angel, or is he a demon? Is he a spirit, or is he a man? Do you think you know his face? Are his thoughts to you like glass? Do his lucid words seem clear? Truths are like arrows barbed in the skin. Words rip like spears, peeling back layers of flesh. Lift back his cover. Reveal for all to see the face underneath the face that he's tried to conceal. Speak to him the painful truth. Show how far he's drifted. Remember for him who he is, for he cannot remember himself. This last poem, I simply titled it A Poem of Self. I mean, it's uh, probably the longest poem that I've ever written. It was, um, I was sitting down with it once and um, I, I, just, I just had a really, really introspective, reflective moment where I was really thinking about who my identity was and what, uh, what the world perceived me as and how, how I, uh, what my identity was in relation to God in relation to other people, and this is the poem that came out of it. A poem of self. Je marche sur un plateau blanc, une table où je pense au sommeil, où j'écoute les couleurs, et je vois la musique. C'est une place dans mon cerveau, où je vois mon Dieu et il me voit. He is the master of compensation, a master of disguise, like a wardrobe of masks, seen his faces, each different from the one before. You call him fake, you cannot see. Why does each light show a different side? Like the light that shines at different angles, showing different beauties of the jewel. A gem is cut with many facets, like an object must be turned, one side, one side always obstructed when the other is seen. Yet you are satisfied with the one. 
you are satisfied with one beauty. Your narrow definition, your imperfect view of perfection fails to grasp the whole. Everything has imperfections. Yet the small box of your mind cannot contain it. That is why you cannot see all of it. You blind yourself to his flaws with your myopic focus. You see one good side ignoring the rest. You fear you will see that flaw. You fear your vision of beauty marred. Anything new you shun. If it fails to fit, you fail to comprehend. Or if you see his flaw, you can't see anything else. The wonder of it all disappears. Stop looking at minutia. The brush stroke is no painting. The diction is no poem. The note is no song. Pull away and maybe you'll see. Each flaw adds a striking beauty. Each different face is but a facet. A symphony of sides that make up a whole. The reflection of each and the refraction of all. A genius, do you see? See the, see the handicap he has striven to hide. A charismatic leader, is he? Or the submitting follower? Is he an eloquent diplomat? Or a passionate fighter? A showman and socialite? A philosopher and poet? A strong athlete, an outstanding scholar? A visionary dreamer, a practical thinker? A lover of God, a lover of man? A man of many faces, a paradox of existence in singular form. The reconciled dichotomy of unfettered ambition and the ennui that opposes him. Does he even know himself? The face of a man so vital in speech, though he sees its effect, he never sees. Omniscience is not the quality of man. The self is aware of the whole without truly seeing, and the other sees truly in part, but never the whole. Mm. Perhaps you are gifted to see in part, so you can see those parts in truth. But do not think that understanding part, perhaps better than he, that you truly know him. Despair not. Doubt not, for you are the mirror itself, the device that shows the truth. You reflect his light back to him. So stop looking at the feeble images, the minor projections of self-construed glory, the walls and masks that he puts up for show, that draw your attention to one face as if it were the whole truth. Look past and see the man of many faces. Dare to see the complexity. Dare to expand your sight. Fulfill his true desire. Built as one fear. Challenge your paradigm. Dare to come near. That's all, guys. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, J.I.